Hello, hello. So today I'm going to talk about seven software. Uh, I was hoping I could find some uh, incredibly interesting thing to say about the company, uh, but unfortunately I was a bit stuck, like I was last time when I worked on my uh, revamp of uh, the Encounter game. So seven software. Uh, this company only made a few games, uh, mostly on Zurich. Uh, I was trying to get a complete list of the game they made on the other platform, uh, like the Spectrum on the Commodore 64, uh, but there were actually not that many. Uh, so I think we can say that Seven Software is an, mostly an Zurich company. Uh, if you know of the other games, please, uh, please tell. Um, I have most of them. I'm just missing Shopper and Extended Basic, uh, which maybe I managed to go at some point. I managed to find uh, some of the uh, advertisement. Uh, that one I actually found uh, thanks to Baz from uh, the Atari Sector Forum. Um, and uh, you can see some of the games they had. It's always the same list of games. Uh, that one seems to be available only on the disk spectrum. Uh, but uh, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one are on the Uric. And that one is only on the Commodore 64, the Mystery of Monroe Manor. And if uh, you look there, it's actually one of the ports uh, that they made. Um, uh, it's actually an Australian game from uh, Softgold, also called uh, Gameworks Software. And I do have an other one here, uh, the real challenge for your Oricode Spectrum, which is basically the same list, uh, same list of games uh, that what we had uh, before. So, Third Software was founded in 1983 uh, by Adrian Shepard and Mike Howard, and you can see that Adrian Shepard did most of their games. There are a few where we have question marks because we are not quite sure. Uh, it's probably Adrian for that one. A view to a kill that they made for the mark we don't know. Uh, and they were in a small uh, house in the suburbs of a uh, city in the uh, UK where there is the Severn Bridge, uh, which was uh, built in 1966. And this is where the logo of their company comes from. And then later, Adrian worked on other games on the 8 bit machines uh, up to the 90s, including Pipe Dream, One Man on His Dream, and BMX Simulator. I've been searching in the French uh, magazines, and I found this thing. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, Price, Golden Price, uh, 1983, uh, when you see the Uric one. And if you look actually here, we have Dinky Kong, we have Grail. So on the back, there are some of the uh, Seven Software uh, games, but in none of the magazine, uh, there are not actually many, many, uh, many tests of, of these games. But I managed to find one. That's a test for Chopper uh, from uh, Theoric. Um, a very good arcade game uh, for your Oric one and in a computer, Home Computer Weekly from uh, 95, January 95, we have also the review for the, for the game uh, in, in English. 90% instruction, playability 90%, graphics 95%, value for money 60%. And in uh, Auric uh, user, Auric owner, sorry, uh, we have uh, this, which is an Auric club where you can get some of the games for, uh, for cheaper, like uh, Dinky Kong, Attempt to Rescue the Girl Held Captive by an Angry Gorilla, including free color graphics, normally $6.95, and if you're a member of the club, you can get it for $2.95. And here we have a review for Quack on Jack. Gravitor on Encounter. Uh, originality one star for Gravitor, but graphics four stars. Encounter, originality two stars, addictiveness one star. So you can see it's uh, not uh, 
Fabulous, fabulous. Quack Jack got more, uh, more stars, but nothing to get uh, crazy about. And I think that the main reason is that these games are mostly made in basic, uh, and the controls are not fabulous. Uh, and they are even worse uh, if you're playing an emulator, because the keys of chosen don't match very well. So, let's see the actual games. So, the first one in 1983 is Address File Manager. As you can see, it's not something very exciting. The program Address File Manager is program code strictly copyrighted on software, required only. The program is a new departure and software for the required micro. It will allow you to keep all your important records and names and addresses up to 255 can keep can be kept in each file on file can be saved and loaded using the unknown cassette recorder. Features money driven, prompted keyboard blah, 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 and made by Micro World. So not particularly exciting, it's a utility, it's made in basic, but yeah. It's clean and it works. What I really like about uh, Seventh of Trey is that the, they actually had some very nice uh, cover art. I've been trying to find out who made uh, the art. I was not able to, to find it. So here we have Lone Raider. You will see at the end some uh, gameplay examples of the thing actually running. If the game was actually as good as the cover art was, it would be awesome. Unfortunately, it is not. The story so far for Eons, Earth's battlefleet has held back the alien Zugs, who are intent on the complete destruction of humanity in order to gain strategic position. Uh, interestingly, the, there are the music in the game, and that's a total ripoff of uh, the Star Wars uh, team. But they were quite good at ripping because uh, Moria, which is based on uh, Lord of the Ring, is not actually uh, made on. Uh, they did not have the license. Then we have Dinky Kong. Uh, so one other problem with the Seven Software games is that many of them have not been updated for the Spectrum or uh, for the sorry for the Atmos, uh, or they are hard to find. Uh, so if you search for many of the Seven Software games uh, in emulator format, most of them are Oricon version. So if you want to play an emulator, you have to make sure to tweet uh, to tweet. Uh, Oricon uh, ROM, L is not going to load correctly, um, or the keyboard is not going to react, etc. You attempt to rescue your lovely girlfriend who is held captive by an angry gorilla at the top of a series of platforms. This is not easy. So, another clone, that one is obviously Donkey Kong. Then we have Encounter, uh, which is a text uh, mode uh, adventure game. Encounter is a complex, intriguing, classic-style text adventure. Your task is to find and rescue a young girl kidnapped by drugs. Everything you need is here, but you may have to manufacture some items. Clue, chemistry, knowledge, helps. So that's again, uh, uh, if you search for uh, upgrade time, uh, you will see that uh, I converted, still not released, uh, it's going to happen one day, uh, it's, I converted it to a graphical uh, adventure game. Then we have Grail. Nothing special to talk about. Uh, welcome to the world of the quest. We will explain the program and its main feature. The aim of the game is to find the Holy Grail, the mythical Calice, which has been hidden in the Castle Perigos. When the game starts, you will find one floor of the five floor castle displayed as a grid with each of the room darkened. And you have to move with NSEW. Nice cover, not a very interesting game. Jogger, well, that one is an interesting case. Uh, it's actually a clone of uh, Frogger, uh, but instead of uh, Frog trying to cross uh, the road, it's a Jogger. 
uh, it's another of these games which is mostly an Oriquan version. And if you try to play on Atmos, it kind of work, but uh, you don't see your character. It's all black. Uh, you only see it uh, when it dies, which is kind of not awesome. Then we have Moria. So it's a weird game. Uh, basically, the entire play field is a small corner on the left side of the screen with uh, squares, and you move a character a playthrough. And uh, each of the room can contain either a trader, nothing, some gold, um, a magician, some orcs. And yeah, it's, it's a very, very basic game. And every time you encounter something and it goes back to the map, the map is erased, so you don't know what you visited, which is very annoying. Arcade, Assembler, Disassembler, Editor. It's supposed to not actually bad. What I'm wondering is why did Seven Software release an assembler disassembler tool if most of their games are in basic? That makes no sense to me. Then we have Ghostman, which I guess you figured out that it is a clone of Pac-Man. Smooth machine code action. Yeah, so that one is actually an assembler. Uh, color, sound, ghost man, ghost, dots, power pills, fruit, nine levels, high score, and mystery bonus. Uh, that one is actually not too bad, uh, but the key layout uh, makes it very difficult. Uh, basically, if you're playing on PC, you have to use uh, diagonal because it's a shift key to go up and a row down to go down. Yeah, complicated. Then we have Gravitor. So that one is relatively smooth and, and nice, uh, but like all these uh, gravity-based games, it is really difficult. Uh, you have a lot of you have to fight with inertia, so you and if you do anything, you explode. But um, it's uh, it's a decent game. Uh, Require a bit of patience, but uh, not bad. And the last one is Quack and Jack. Uh, this is supposed to be a pirate. And this is a pterodactyl. And you have to find all the eggs of the pterodactyl before they hatch. Uh, knowing that you're going to be tracked by uh, computers, uh, hungry rabbits, and, uh, um, and a bunch of other creatures. Uh, it's a weird game. Red Jack the Pirate Duck. Terra Ductile, Sliding Flagstones, Value Chaser, Multi-Level Sound, Full Color, High Score. Uh, that one is probably worth actually learning. Uh, there is an interesting mechanic involving uh, sliding uh, the play field uh, when you lock uh, yourself out. And the last one, which is not a Seven Software game, is that one, uh, Dangerousement Brut, uh, A View to a Kill, the computer game which I have here in a French version and in British version. Uh, so that one, both are released by Donarc, but in France it was Eureka Informatic, which will later become the company which will buy the rest of the stocks uh, of Eureka uh, and release Eureka to a very, very low, low price. James Bond is back on his latest secret mission. Now you take his part in this too exciting arcade adventure game taken straight for the film. The City Hall Escape, the Silicon Valley Mine. Uh, what I find interesting is that see over for full instruction. There's nothing there. Uh, there's no actual instruction. Oh, is there? Oh, we've been tricked. Loading. Please refer to cassette for loading instruction. The longest load time is around nine minutes. If you want to speed this up, zero the cassette counter before loading. Not the counter numbers on the cassette. The next time you play the game, load the menu as before. Select the game you want to play, then fast forward to the correct counter. Loading problem, if you have any problem, you will, you will replace the cassette without delay. 
code, performance, list of features, pause, abort, some games, the CTO, blah blah blah, Silicon Valley, useful object, grapnel gun, dynamite and lighter, code numbers. How the duck shoot works. When you press the fire button, control will pass from bound to the upper part of the duck shoot menu. So yeah, uh, I assume they translated uh, the menu as well in the French version. And yes, they have. Pistolet à grappin, dynamite et briquet. Comment fonctionne le menu à fenêtre? Yeah. Uh, I wish I had uh, more things to actually say about uh, this company. Uh, I really wish I could find uh, uh, Adrian Shepard uh, because I wanted to ask him uh, authorization of making a new version of uh, Encounter with the graphics on it. That being said, I could also consider that since Half of the games they did were clones of uh, made without authorization. Uh, I would probably not feel guilty if I release a clone of their own game. So I guess that's it for today. And uh, if you wait, the rest is going to be some uh, gameplay demonstration. Uh, there you go.